Welcome, Solara here. I hope you guys are doing well today. I am here to do probably mostly a reading. I have a few downloads, um, but I think I'm just going to um, just follow the divine flow that has been opening up for me as I've been getting ready. I'll come back and do um, some of the other downloads maybe later, but I just kind of want to follow the thread um, of consciousness that has kind of been opened up for me as I prepared for this reading. So before I get into this, I want to welcome you all for, and thank you for being here. Welcome if you're visiting for the first time. If you were attracted to the title, um, I invite you by all means to stay and see if there are any messages for you. Um, but more importantly, to see if you're also vibing with my frequency as the messenger. Otherwise, um, there's no point in sticking around where we're not in frequential alignment ever, but especially not on this uh, phase of ascension. Um, so uh, what that means is if you're, you know, you um, aren't like understanding what I'm saying here, if there's something about me that you don't like or um, I rub you the wrong way in any way, which is fine because I'm not, I'm not for everyone. Um, it would be best for you to go and seek this information from someone who your heart is actually open to to receive, okay? Because um, this isn't a personal thing, it's an energetic thing. And when we are working energetically um, with beings that we're not in alignment with, there's a repulsion thing that we send out. And so we actually don't receive the fullness and the goodness of all it is that they're sharing, um, not only with the words, but in the ways that we are constantly energetic, energetically activating and deactivating one another also in accordance with whether we are in divine alignment or not. So um, yes, welcome if you are returning. Thank you guys for all of your support across my platforms on Substack, um, on my other YouTube channels, Solara Rises and Daily Alchemy with Solara. Thank you guys for all the ways that you show up for me. Thank you so much for all your generosity um, with the, the donations you've been sending in, um, whether they're just donations to the channel and some of you have been being very kind and generous and also choosing to make a donation with the um, egg cleansing manual um, I put up as well as that uh, full Tower Astrology Ascension report for 2024 that I was also giving to the collective. So um, those are still up and they're available. You can have them for completely free. You will just put in zero dollars into the, um, when you're asked how much you'd like to pay. Um, and the links will be below and in the comment section. And then you have the option to also, um, you know, choose how much you want to pay. So uh, many of you are choosing to donate and I really do appreciate that. That's very, very kind of you. And I thank you for that. Um, thank you for your support. Um, it helps me to show up here and to be more secure in my root chakra so I can show up here and do what it is I came here to do on the earth planes. Um, in my position and for you as a collective. So I really, it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to those of you who uh, uh, showed up on Saturday for the Road Back to Wholeness. Uh, it was a, a four hour time, four hours were spent um, in togetherness, sharing, um, bouncing ideas back and forth, um, diving into herbs, nutrients, etc. And um, I had a great time with uh, the beings that attended and I'm looking forward to doing more of that uh, moving forward. I have another one coming up on Saturday Saturday, April the 27th. I think there are, it's uh, seven spaces are available because I try to keep um, the Road Back to Wholeness small group sessions um, intimate. So it's only for seven people. And I believe there, uh, there might be like maybe four or five spaces left at the time of recording. So that's for the last Saturday of April, um, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also for those of you who are interested in joining me on Sunday, April the 28th, I will be hosting a Tarot Astrology group Q&A where we will dive into, well, all things Tarot Astrology and we'll especially be talking about and focusing on the power of Mars in this ascension, the power of Mars in your chart. And those of you who have um, Mars, um, those of you who want to look very specifically at your Mars placements, every single person in attendance will have an opportunity for me to channel that, uh, channel what it is that your that Mars is doing through you, by you, why your soul chose to come through um, that specifically that specific Mars alignment. Okay, so. 
There are 13 spaces in total available for that Tarot Astrology group Q&A. So um, I think there are quite a few, there's still quite a lot of spaces left. Um, so you can also find the information for that below. Um, the reason I'm honing in on Mars is because um, the Mars energy the Aries energy, the Scorpio energy is very uh, big right now, very potent, and not just because the sun is moving um, through Aries in, in Western or tropical astrology or in other formats of astrology and astronomically the sun is about to move into Aries. It's not only because of that, but because of the importance of how Mars works to help us to provide the foundation and the de defense mechanisms we need to build our energy as we create new cycles, as we move into new cycles. Mars is a grand teacher on strategy, on war, on protection, defense, offense, but also on how to take action, how to stand ground, and all of those tactics we need to know how to um, to root our energy, um, root the foundations of our energy and establish the tone of what it is we're desiring to create. And so for many of us, all of us, we're entering into a new cycle on an individual level and we are moving into a brand new age, <laughs> which is a, like huger than a cycle. It's like the a, 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 a composition of many cycles, right? Um, so this Mars energy is very important to tap into right now because it's what allows us to connect with our power as divine beings, um, as well as for creation and destruction. Um, but it shows us how to wield the powers of destruction in ways that promote harmony when we are aligned and in tune with the harmony within self that allows us to access the true wisdom, divine wisdom and medicine that the planet has to offer us, which is why I've chosen for the month of April um, to be very focused on the planet Mars in our Tower Astrology Group Q&A. So the Mars energy, a lot of you um, who have uh, have that storm energy, you have the ability to create and to destroy very powerfully and haven't known how to wield that up until this point, and that would be your Mars placement. So a lot of us didn't know, and so instead of using that, we, we actually turned that internally, and there was a lot of self-destruction, self-sabotage, um, uh, and it happened quite um, profoundly because of that power that we have that is meant to be wielded in a different way. That is part of your Mars energy. So that's what we'll be looking at, okay? Um, so with that said, I think those are all the announcements. Let's get into it. So um, when I tell you I want to follow a divine thread, I've been very drawn this morning um, you know, to, to first and foremost, this, this beautiful crystal here. This is called Hulandite. And um, like right off the top of my head, what I can share with you is that it's very powerful for reconnecting with um, information from previous timelines, previous incarnations, etc. It's very good for helping um, you to navigate your emotional fields, your emotional body, where your emotions reside, your dreams reside, your memories reside, whether they're memories from this or other lifetimes, that's what's in your emotional body. Hulandite is really great for helping you to navigate that without the unconscious and subconscious blockages that sometimes come up um, when we try to go to places um, that we have closed off for whatever reason or, or you know, fuckery spell or other beings have done things to close us out of out of those remembrances, out of the access to that energy. Hulandite is very powerful in a gentle way to help us ride the waves of our own waters so that our dream life begins to open up. We're be able to connect with things in meditation or even in our day-to-day -day life that bring back the remembrances of who we are from previous timelines and previous incarnations. Hulandite is great for that. And um, right before I came on, I did pull up a website and I began to look into it and then I decided, nope, let me hit record and let me just um, get into this, uh, read it as I um, record because as I read this, I, I get more information. So it's just easier for me to, to, to share in that way, to let it uh, stream through me. So 
This website is called allcrystal.com and um, they write, Hulandite is a series of tectosilicate minerals that belong to the zeolite group. So zeolite is something that can be utilized in order to clear your body of um, certain toxins and buildups. So it's a, it can be very, very detoxifying, um, especially for the pulling out. I think it's heavy metals very specifically. Um, don't quote me as being absolutely right in that, but I think there's something about a zeolite that helps to pull out, um, at the very least, toxins. Um, I don't know specifically what toxins, I, I don't recall right now, but also I believe zeolite um, has a mineral formation that, again, helps to make the body inhospitable to those things. So I was sharing this with the group on Saturday. Um, and I've shared it with a few of you guys too also in I think one-to-ones, is that your body is, um, is its foundation is minerals. It's, you're, you're rooted on, on minerals. So um, think about the earth and how you are a reflection and an extension and a part of the earth. And the earth is built upon mineral formations, right? Everything has mineral, whether it's the rocks, the waters, the trees, Everything has these minerals. Every action in your body comes down to um, the balancing and the interplay of minerals. It allows certain actions and reactions um, to keep you alive and to keep your metabolism cycling through the, the necessary uh, things it has to do in order to keep your body in balance, whether it's to uh, feed certain things, starve certain things, kill certain things, like through you know the death of, of old cells that have to die. Um, everything is kept in order by proper mineral formation. And to some extent, you could say the same thing happens on Earth. Um, there's a mineral balance that we need in order to keep harmony within and harmony on our Earth planes. And so one of the most important things you can do in regaining your health and making your body um, a vessel that is inhospitable to these energies that have been harvesting off of you, whether they be the molds, the parasites, the bad microbes, the things I've spoken about in previous videos. Um, the foundation um, that needs to be set is based upon your mineral consumption or your mineral maintenance. Okay, so in the West, in regular uh, generic um, governmental nutritional guidelines, um, uh, vitamins, vitamins are always pushed, you know, for health. But the truth of the matter is that many of the vitamins, especially, um, I won't go down that road, but many of the, the vitamins and the nutrients that you need in order to, um, to be healthy, um, they need the proper mineral balance for absorption. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, like t taking trace minerals, but more importantly, recognizing your connection with the earth. We've lost our connection to the earth, and in that, we have become demineralized. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, if we hadn't lost our connection with the earth, the world wouldn't be in the state it's in where um, we have abandoned the the integrity of honoring the seasons, the cycles, and the fertility of the earth in producing what it is she's supposed to produce in her own time. And you can take what I just said and even apply it to yourself because we're, we're just, um, the fact that we do that on the earth is a reflection of how we deal with ourselves. Everything we see externally happening on the earth is a reflection of how we've dealt with ourselves. Because we have fallen so far out of tune with our own internal rhythms, seasons, and cycles that we need to be in harmony with self. We have taken that same behavior that we are expressing towards self and we have implemented it towards the land. Hence the reason why um, we have such horrible commercial farming industries where the land is literally constantly being raped and pillaged because it's constantly being forced to produce against its season, against its seasonality and its cycles. And then also we have a lot of monocropping where we are, instead of rotating crops, we are trying to get a lot of one thing. And so we keep on, keep on producing that until the land is completely depleted and then we just leave it.
And here's the truth, the land can regenerate herself, the earth can regenerate herself, the feminine principle, the mother is a regenerative, a restoring principle, absolutely. But then again, it takes time. And when we are living in balance and in harmony, there's no need to completely deplete the earth or deplete ourselves and, and then have to go through intensive times of replenishment and restoration because we weren't keeping things in balance to begin with. So when I speak about the demineralizing, um, it's deeper than just our consumption and the fact that all of our foods because of these farming practices are devoid of the true mineral content we need for health. So as we deplete the earth through completely ignoring her needs, um, we deplete her mineral content which then depletes us because what we're eating is not full of the nutrition that we need to be in harmony and in balance. But like I said before, it goes deeper than that. It is actually literally the moving away uh, mentally and emotionally that produces the physical effects, right? So the demineralizing has to do with many, many, um, you could say many um, modes of, that we have to begin to uh, address. Not only what we put in our body, but how we are now relating to our own natural rhythms, seasons, and cycles, because as we come back into alignment and truth with what it is we need to be in perfect harmony for self, which is very individual, everyone's needs for balance are going to be different, dietarily speaking, rest-wise, um, water-wise, and hydration, all of us are so different. What you need biochemically is as unique as your fingerprint, what you need emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in order to thrive and be harmonious with yourself, other beings and the earth, is going to um, differ from person to person. And this was another strategy in the matrix that they used in order to keep us at war with self, was that they created all of these guidelines and instructions that we were all told we were supposed to follow for health or we were supposed to follow for success, or we were supposed to follow for whatever reason. And the truth of the matter is, for as long as we're doing that, we are actually moving away from what it is that we need on an individual level to be strong. And they knew that, and they needed you weak in order for you to be open to energy harvesting, for your boundaries to be, um, for you to be vulnerable, for your boundaries to come down, for your energy field to be more permeable. The more you move out of your your, um, what you need to maintain your sense of internal harmony and internal peace, the more you move away from that, the more you screw up your own natural electromagnetic settings that are designed to naturally call in what roots you enjoy in harmony and naturally repel and repulse that which seeks to take you out of that place. When you move away from yourself, you're opening yourself up to more of those things that want to pull at you and take you out of alignment. Okay, so this is why one of the most powerful things you can do when you want to protect yourself is grounding in your energy. The more grounded and rooted you are in your energy, the more you begin to hone in on your true divine frequency, your home frequency. And in that place, um, energetically speaking, your electromagnetic settings push things out that don't belong, that, that would take you out of harmonious union with yourself. It's a natural defense mechanism. And Aries is what helps us to establish that. Mars is what helps us to establish that, which is why it's coming up right now in such a powerful way. Okay, so um, the remineralizing of uh, of your of your body um, occurs the remineralizing must occur on on many levels right so uh, we were talking about the zeolite and how it's good for its mineral content but it's also good for clearing out because when you are minerally um, when you are minerally balanced within your body 
on a physical level, what I was explaining to you electromagnetically in your energy field on every level, it happens in your body too. Meaning that when you have proper mineral alignment and your body is working in the stasis that promotes its own internal harmony, right? Then your body is naturally fighting against those foreign things that would want to try to come in and take over. So therefore, when cancer cells begin to produce and everyone produces cancer cells because they are are just a reflection of how our bodies sometimes metabolize toxins, right? When um, a, a, a foreign energy that wants to eat off of your life force, like a cancer or a parasite or a mold or a fungi um, or a, um, a bad microbe comes in or a bacteria or a virus, when it comes into your body to do that, your body's natural defenses when you are in um, proper alignment and health and harmony naturally will uh, fight against that. It will naturally do that. Um, sickness, um, especially sicknesses that cause disease um, and a degeneration, but especially, um, and then it, um, eventually death of the body, right? Um, those are caused by the, the body's natural defense mechanisms being worn away over time because we haven't been taught how to properly look after ourselves in terms of our nutrition, our rest, the things we need to be doing. We've been cut off from our intuitive ability to connect with and heal our bodies because technically when you come onto this earth plane as a high frequency being and you choose to be in a body to experience your your God consciousness physically, um, you therefore have the manual for how that body works. But then you come into this false matrix system and you are programmed away from your own instinct and therefore your ability to even know that the manual and operating system, the manual for the operating system that is in the unique body that you are inhabiting is within you. Nobody else has that manual, only you have it. The only thing anyone can actually really do is try to direct you back to it or give you guidance for how you can go deeper into accessing that manual, unlocking those truths. And really that's what a true healer should do. A true medical professional should be working with you in order to help you heal yourself with their guidelines, with their help, with their wisdom, with the information they have about body systems. That's how it ultimately should work because ultimately we are all our own master healers, okay? Or that's how it was divinely designed. Okay, so um, let's get back into the Hulandite. So um, Hulandite occurs in striking colors such as peach, white, it can be colorless, green, red, and yellow. So really a lot of um, lower chakra and heart colors. So a lot about the establishing of something, but also a lot, again, about the emotional fields and the material. The root is uh, the, the buildup of emotional energies that allow to your material reality to come forth. So everything um, material, the last place it goes through elementally are the waters and um, energetically the waters are connected to your emotions. So everything that we create that is material is a buildup of mental and emotional energy. So what do I mean by that? I mean that before anything comes to be an invention, for example, it's an idea. That's a mental energy as well as the spiritual energy because it's inspiration. So it's mental and spiritual energy, completely invisible, right? But the person who is inspired and has the idea, um, they're connecting to that invisible, um, the invisible nature of that energy that they're going to bring into fruition. And how are they going to bring that into material reality? Let's say you're an artist or a sculptor and you have an idea for um, a statue. The idea is in your mind. Right now, nobody else can access that idea in your mind but you, unless, you know, we're not dealing with energy harvesting and how people tune into other people's energies. But let's just say um, there's no fuckery. Nobody really has access to that vision you have of what it is that you're seeing for that statue but you. 
okay? Now, as you begin to muse on that and think about it and begin to wonder how would I begin to formulate that, what materials would I use, etc., etc., and now you're becoming more emotionally invested, you're growing a love for it, so now the emotions are getting involved, and the emotions, the desire behind it, are now propelling you forward with your ideas even more. And then the next thing you do is you start to take action. You go out and you research the materials, you go and check out the materials, and then maybe you start to play with the materials. And now you are taking action and you're forming something and there's something tangible and somebody else outside of you can now begin to connect with your process, right? Until eventually you bring forth and you birth. You birth the um, sculpture that once upon a time was just an inspiration, an idea, an image in your mind that you've brought to life through the application of the thought, the application of the desire, the emotion that is actually the driving force that keeps you going, and then the action of actually doing has now created something. But what is the driving force? What actually brings that thing to life? It's what motivates you and keeps going. It's not just the idea. Many people have ideas ideas, right? And they don't have, they lack the motivation or the confidence or the drive to bring it forth. The motivation, the confidence, the drive is connected very succinctly to your emotions, your emotional history, and your, you know, have you been able to finish things and do things before? Do you have that confidence to believe that you can get to the finish line, right? So it's your emotional history, and it's the amount of desire you have behind wanting to create it and believing you can that actually causes you to physically take the action that brings forth the sculpture now in material form. Everything, therefore, is truly birthed through the emotions. Emotions are what direct energy. So the the mental energy, the thought, the idea, without the emotion, it has nowhere to go. So as uh, high frequency beings, electromagnetic beings, um, you are constantly directing energy through your emotions. And so your ability to connect with the emotion that you want in order to create the material reality that is in alignment with what you want is really very important. And if you have a lot of stagnancies, repressions, um, things that um, blocks that you're not able to access because of, well, most of the time it's some kind of trauma, whether it's from this lifetime or other lifetimes, um, then that forms a, a crystallization within your energy field that messes with your ability to properly birth and create what it is you desire, which then creates more stagnancy and stop-start energy or um, uh, like lack of confidence. There's a lot of uh, backflow of that energy when it's not flowing correctly. And I'm saying all of that because Hulandite um, is one that helps you to connect with the um, with the, the process of bringing something back to life through your waters, through the balancing of your emotional field. I let it that part out because I had an interruption. Hulandite is, the, is a crystal that helps you to connect with your emotional, um, your emotional body, your ability to um, program your own waters back into the settings that you need in order to create a reality that's in alignment with what you desire. When you have a lot of blocks in your emotional fields, which will definitely have a lot to do with heart chakra, solar plexus, and, sh and sacral chakra, when you have a lot of blocks in your emotional fields, most of the time it's from trauma, it's from repression, it's from the unprocessed energies, it's from not being able to um, work your way through the emotional energy. Meaning that when things happen to us emotionally, we are supposed to find out the value in that. And when we find the value in the lesson for ourselves, it's one of the best ways that we can begin to then um, come back into harmony and balance and move forward. But the false matrix traumatized us and then had us stuck in shame by by forcing us to repress and hold on to these um, emotional energies that then stagnated in our fields, crystallized, messed up our electromagnetic settings. So now we have a desire for something. Who? A lot of interruptions today, huh? My window just flew open. We have a lot of um, 
desire for something. We have a lot of ability to connect with something, but we don't know how to pull it forth because our emotional settings are out of alignment and not conducive with creating and birthing what it is we actually want because of the stagnancies within the emotional body. I hope that makes sense, okay? Um, so, Hulandite is good for helping to deal with, with that very specifically because it helps you to navigate the waters of your own reality uh, and the stagnancies and the crystallization within your emotional body where um, there have been subconscious, unconscious blocks due to programming, trauma, etc. And you can go into those places now um, without fear and without... Um, without the um, resistance, because um, Hulandite is wonderful for helping you to, even if you can't connect with it in meditation or consciously, it will take you there through your dreams and help you to, to, to begin to make sense, or even through psychic phenomenon, etc. Um, so, or even through your exchanges with another person who is very gifted in that, in, in psychic, in their psychic abilities, because, um, what many people aren't aware of is that uh, readers, it's difficult to, let me speak for myself. For example, when I do a Tower Astrology full rebirth report, some beings, it's very easy for me to flow through their charts, channel their story, tell them who they are galactically. Other beings, there's a resistance, a resistance. And sometimes I have to contact the, those people and be like, listen, I need you to chill out. I need you to drink more water um, because I'm having issues. I'm having problems with the flow flowing through your energy right now. And um, I had a client a few months ago and I was writing a full rebirth report for her and I hit this block. I don't think she'll mind me saying this, but I hit this block and I, I contacted her. I said, it was really weird. I was writing, I was flowing. Then all of a sudden this weekend, I, I couldn't get the information as well. And she goes to me, oh, well this week, it was a holiday, right? She goes, this weekend, um, I, I drank a little bit more than I should have. And so maybe it was because I was dehydrated. So she shared that with me and it made perfect sense because in order to flow through another being's waters, which is what psychic work is, those waters need to be open. You need to be hydrated. You need to be open to the experience, having an open heart, truly wanting on a conscious level um, for someone to explore that with you but also even um, engaging with your own subconscious and unconscious to, um, to open yourself up in that way, even if you haven't been able to do it for yourself. So this is um, the importance of, of understanding and overstanding uh, how, how um, powerful your waters are to connect you with other realms, other dimensions, psychic phenomenon, psychic information. Everything is connected and separated by the waters and it's almost like Hulandite gives you um, this passageway, uh, opens a passageway for you to do that. Okay, so um, the stone helps release energy blockages and helps regulate your nervous system, right? Because your nervous system, when it is um, in like hyper um, fixation or hyper um, vigilant mode or it, it spends too much time in sympathetic mode um, that causes your energy to constrict so when you're in sympathetic mode unnaturally it's because you're living in fear guilt shame all of the things on the uh, vibrational scale that are lower vibrations um, that's where you are staying vibrationally when you are um, living too much in sympathetic mode or when you are living in high stress situations, right? And that causes your energy field to shrink. It causes constriction. You can think about it almost like a defense mechanism. So fear, um, guilt, shame, all of those things are there to help you course correct. They're protective mechanisms. They're not things that you're supposed to stay in. They're not emotions you're supposed to live in because otherwise you get stuck in them because they are emotions that are designed to constrict you, to protect you, to redirect you to the next stage, phase, um, thing that you need in order to become expanded again. So um, when you are 
energetically too much in sympathetic or fight or flight or survival mode, your energy field becomes constricted, it becomes tight, and energetically speaking, there's more crystalline formation buildups that, uh, uh, that form stagnancies, right? So you're not able to therefore receive even the things that you you long for, you desire. Um, and this is the importance of, of dealing with traumas and why, um, why I do what I do because I had such a, um, ugh, I was so angry with all of the shit that uh, the spiritual community was spewing on people who were thoroughly traumatized and making them feel as if they were manifesting that just because that's what they wanted. No, that was coming into your energy, but not because that's what you wanted, but that's because you're electromagnetically, that's what you've been programmed into by trauma, by your programmers, by your abusers, across timelines, you've been programmed out of your electromagnetic settings to pull in things that harmed you more and then helpless to know how to get out of it, how to change that, how to shift that, how to, um, you know, you're doing all of the things you're supposed to do and you're not getting the results that other beings are getting because you're not dealing with the energy on all planes. You're not recognizing it's an electromagnetic settings issue, not a, um, <laughs> not a, uh, um, um, a, a sign of character or anything else that beings or or ranking because some of the highest ranking beings on this earth are the ones who couldn't manifest for themselves okay some of the highest ranking beings are the ones who couldn't manifest for themselves because their their energy fields were so pillaged and used for other beings um, needs to to take from them or to keep them down in order to bring forth manifestations that satisfied their egos as opposed to being in divine alignment. So some of the highest ranking beings on this planet in the false matrix were the ones who were master manifestors, but they were manifesting the wrong energy because their settings had been so profoundly fucked with because they became huge, um, huge, uh, uh, not only magnets for trauma, but huge targets for constant trauma cycles because the false matrix system was threatened by them waking up. That's the truth. Okay, so when I began to wake up and see this and recognize the fallacy behind the, um, you just manifest like this and you need more love and light and yada, 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 and all that other spiritual bypassing bullshit that's actually designed to keep people stuck in, in a false matrix spirituality program, that's the truth, you know, because you can't exit it if you're not in your wholeness and healed and most people running around loving and lighting everything are just bypassing because they don't want to tune into their own shame they don't want to tune into their own shame and they are some of the main ones that therefore like to project and deflect their shame onto others and say love and light you know but anyway that's a whole other thing so hulandite because <laughs> we're just we're just going on a dis divine stream of consciousness right now right so um, Hulandite helps to release those energy blockages that regulate your nervous systems because it deals with the shifting of very stagnant emotional energy that is a production um, that is a uh, that is a result of many trauma timelines and cycles and the accumulation of those waste materials, those emotional waste materials in your fields that were never processed, that were never removed, that were never properly utilized um, in the way that they needed to be in order to promote your harmony and fluidity within your own fields. It embodies a vibration that supports a deep connection to higher wisdom. So this is showing me that many of you are, are ready to receive um, higher wisdom uh, that's going to reconnect you to some of your um, you know, your primordial wisdom, some of, like I said before, the wisdom that you have concerning your own body and its manual and how it actually works and functions, um, which only you have access to, um, including 1313 on my clock, including your own healing abilities, the abilities that are very unique to you, not only in how you heal yourself, but how you were sent onto the earth planes in order to utilize that also for maintaining um, the harmony of the earth and how helping other beings to connect with their own 
own ability to heal and be in harmony with self too. So the presence of Hulandite in a space or room promotes an environment of calm and creativity. Okay, so this is, um, this is speaking to me about um, coming back into um, receiving mode. There are a lot of 1313 on my clock, like I said before, but there are many um, divine feminine, as I say, that is like a, a storm flew the window open, and storm energy is, is the divine mother, um, the dark mother um, aspects. And there are two, there, there, the dark mother shows up in a few ways in our reality, and she's been speaking very loudly to me um, over the past couple of days. Um, she'll show up in the birthing of something and the destruction of something, but she'll also show up in what is necessary for the restoration, the rejuvenation, the regeneration of something. So when you think about that, that's happening for everyone in different ways right now, um, in very, very different but very, very prominent ways where all things are dying, things are being born, and things are being um, nurtured back into right alignment. And so um, in that energy, the dark mother, um, the void, energy of the dark mother really shines because it's the void where all things must go to begin and where all things must end and it's the void that teaches us how to reprogram ourselves back into our power um, so this is interesting that this has been coming up especially with that um that download I was getting uh, a week ago on the eclipse uh, about that black uh, that black neutron star being um, that energy awakening um, in certain individuals that are in alignment with that where cycles go to end. They have the energy signature electromagnetically that not only allow them to very proficiently bring cycles to an end and to rebirth and to transform and to do all that for self, but their energy is so powerful in that way that it does it also for the earth and the grids. It's linked to the earth's ability to do that. So there's something here um, about um, about that energy that's happening for all of us in different ways. It's just going to be more pronounced for those beings who have that electromagnetic uh, signature very specifically. So um, what also was coming through with the downloads was um, the May full moon is going to be very significant for some. Um, there's a lot of transitions that are happening, um, maybe leading up to that full moon or maybe that that full moon is going to kick off. Um, but there's a lot of transitions and if you're resonating with, with my frequency and my energy, then what is coming through for you is that there's a gentleness and there's a sweetness through this transition. There's a lot of support and protection coming through, like that card that um, was coming through last week with the, the black dragon and, and, and the protection. Um, as you cocoon and you transition, there's a lot of protection. So um, another thing that was coming through is that there is a, this full moon in May, this passageway to it, or maybe the, the full moon in May is instigating this, the breaking of self-sabotaging mindsets and behaviors caused by the wounding and the spells of the false matrix. So many of us constantly were self-sabotaging, you know, um, whether it was because of imposter syndrome, because of spell work, um, where we were constantly being sabotaged and then we learned how to sabotage ourselves. It doesn't matter. Our settings had been um, placed in to a situation where we didn't even know how to sustain some of the very things we wanted because we didn't feel worthy of them, right? And um, that's just one one way we self-sabotage or one reason, right? Nobody sabotages what they want because they are um, incompetent or, you know, whatever shame-based story that the Matrix would try to place on people to make them feel bad. No one actually does it for that. There's always underlying trauma, emotional reasons why beings do what they do whether it makes sense to us or not. And so a lot of those self-sabotage programs are a result of the constant wounding and re-traumatization um, that the matrix pushed and promoted in order for its energy harvesting templates and agendas to stay alive. 
and because all of those things have become unplugged and what we're dealing uh, with now are the residual energies and programs that we must internally personally overcome in order to bring the full collective shift um, something that's coming uh, very beautifully to help is like the, the divine mother almost like taking her arm and being like Psh! be gone those energies um, those stories those narratives it's like all of them are being uh, loosened out of our energy field for clearance those things that promoted and supported our own um, constant self-sabotage or inability to connect with our true power and confidence so we could rise and not only think in accordance with who we we actually are but actually be it and become it so um, there's the there's a rise of true divine mothering and when I say divine mothering I'm speaking about the fact that all of us have had to um, to reparent ourselves um, because of the trauma of the matrix because uh, parenting in the matrix was designed to cause generational and intergenerational trauma and this is why generational curse breakers were sent to awaken to this and to stop it but there's it's not enough to stop it now you've got to heal um, the effects of it you've got to stop the patterns and the cycles etc and so in doing that we reparent ourselves and one of the greatest wounds in the matrix was the mother wound because um, the, the matrix matrix is a, a mother energy it's the template through which something is is birthed Birthed, right so it is a mothering energy and so the false matrix was designed purposely to disenfranchise um, the feminine energy but, but very specifically when it comes to motherhood because it's through the mother that trauma cycles continue not only emotionally but biologically speaking they travel through the father also absolutely but because the woman is the one who holds the eggs in her body um, from the time she's born and those are formed in her mother and then she was formed in her there's a greater chain through which trauma can pass through feminine energy and because feminine energy is also the where the place where all is birthed so the masculine energy provides the seed but the feminine energy provides the emotional energy that can create that so remember I was saying in the beginning um, that the emotional energy is what births and brings forth things. If you have an idea, right? If you have an idea, let's go back to the sculpting idea. You have an idea for a sculpture and you are a very accomplished artist and you've done really well in the past. It's going to be, you're still going to deal with resistances, imposter syndrome and everything, but you're going to have a stronger energetic foundation that helps you to connect with your ability to bring forth the sculpture based upon the fact that you've done things like that multiple times before successfully. So when it comes time to applying your emotional energy, your drive, your motivation, your focus, it's going to be easier for you than the person who's creating for the first time a sculpture and maybe they they are an artist but they've had no real um, uh, material successes or beings that have actually reflected back to them their beauty and their power and their worth and their agency in that area or that field and so what they're fighting against in terms of resistance is going to be greater than the other artists and so in that more self-doubt more things that can cause them to connect with their woundedness is going to come up now this is where either they're going to push past and create that thing anyway or the emotional energies will override their desire and they just won't create right but they have created something even though they didn't create the sculpture they've created another uh, cycle or another layer within a cycle where they are repeating the story of not being good enough of not being of, 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 of quote unquote failing which is not really real anyway right so we're always creating through our emotions it's the same so in other words the two artists same um, thing same idea um, but different outcome based upon how they apply their emotional energy based upon their emotional histories okay so um, I think I was saying that because um, we're dealing now with with our ability to reprogram our waters um, back into the ability to 
to uh, birth what it is we desire without the emotional history, the trauma cycles interfering. And this is where the Divine Mother energy is coming in to help us to break those self-sabotaging um, mindset cycles, our um, devotion to those energies unconsciously, but we were still devoted to those stories, right? And for many of you who've been working through that consciously, you've done that through reparenting, but you've done that through dealing with that deep mother wound, which may have been, um, you know, um, cycled by way of your relationship with your biological mother, but it's true genesis and the reason it existed to begin with, because it was probably passed down to her from her mother, the reason it could exist to begin with was because of the false matrix, the false mother programs of the matrix that were designed to destroy her children, that the matrix, the false matrix is a false mother system that was designed to consume her own children. Okay, um, so there's a rise of true divine mothering and true divine mothering is a, a complete recognition that every single child is different and needs to be therefore nurtured um, in accordance with their own value, worth and strengths. Um, and we're not here to change people, we're not here to manipulate, coerce, beat them down, shame them, ridicule them into becoming something they're not supposed to be. We're here to, to tend to their ability to grow. That's divine mothering. Karmic um, and distorted false matrix mothering habits were designed to limit us, judge us, condemn and criticize us so we would get stuck in shame. Okay, um, because we were not being what it was that we were supposed to be in accordance with the false matrix. And we were constantly being browbeaten to do that as opposed to embracing who we naturally are divinely and allowing that to flow and come forth. So we would get stuck in the shame, right? Um, and the shame, being stuck in shame, which again is the lowest emotional energy highest density and lowest emotional frequency on the vibrational scale, getting stuck in shame is necessary to produce constant self-betrayal, self-rejection, and self-sabotage, okay? So being stuck in shame is what causes us to reject self. It causes us to sabotage ourselves. It causes us to betray ourselves. It causes us to give our power away to everything and anything outside of ourselves because we think it's better than us. That's what shame does. And it was imperative that we be stuck in that in various ways, whether it was obvious all beings in the false matrix were stuck in shame. Um, even the ones at the, in the highest echelons of society were stuck in shame because it was toxic shame that kept on pushing them to want more and not to be satisfied with what they, with all the success they were having because the truth of the matter was a lack of satisfaction was within because there was a shame narrative that they kept on trying to feed externally by accruing more. So all of us were stuck in it, even if it was presented in different ways, right? So it was imperative that we all be stuck in those shame stories and cycles that had us constantly producing against ourselves and our truth and constantly therefore self-sabotaging, self-rejecting and self-betraying because this is what kept the energy harvesting templates of the matrix alive. And there's something uh, happening right now um, to bring this all full circle because I've got to go. There's something happening right now um, and this is why Hollandite is showing up and even um, the dark mother energies have been showing up very profoundly also for me, Kali Ma, um, Medusa are two that have definitely been in my um, awareness over the past couple of days and um, there, there's a shifting in, in uh, our emotional bodies. There's a shifting in um, there's a shifting in the things that we were unable to connect with emotionally because of our trauma and it's happening collectively, but it's like we're, we're going to be able, and if this is your reading, you're going to be able to access something that you couldn't access before because the density that had been caused by trauma from this lifetime and many incarnations was too much for you to overcome in the frequency that the earth was at. But something is occurring where there's a a shift where the frequency of the earth um, and your own work on yourself is allowing um, the breaking down of a very um, a very uh, 
ingrained and established um, emotional stagnancy energy that kept you cycling through self-sabotage okay alrighty <laughs> that was um, a lot longer I had full intention of going into cards um, I'll pull you one card because I've got to go and it's already an hour in. I mean, I guess I, I, I said I was going to go with the divine flow. I did go with the divine flow. It wasn't necessarily the written downloads, but it was still like all, all downloads that were coming through, I guess. So that's how it's supposed to be for today's reading. Okay. I'm going into the Rose Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. The wild rose, do it your way. Embrace your uniqueness, untamed. So um, this is, a, again, the self-sabotage for some of you, for all of you, for all of us in, in a myriad of ways, was likely also due to this, um, that shame energy of rejecting the wholeness of self. Um, you know, like how uh, we'll hold ourselves back from doing something or saying something or expressing something because we don't want to appear a certain way, make someone else feel bad, um, you know, look stupid, fail, whatever the reason is, it's something that that would constantly push you out of your, your the full expression of your power. It's breaking and um, you you allow it to break by embracing your uniqueness and being who you are unabashedly and unashamedly. And um, and that is harder than, than, than we think it is oftentimes because even when we're living authentically, there are still um, places um, where we still struggle with uh, being who we are fully because of fear of rejection or because of so much self-rejection programming. Um, but it's time to like, um, uh, take the shackles off your feet. I'm hearing that Mary Mary song, take those shackles off your feet so you can dance, you know, like um, if someone else has a problem with you, if a group has a problem with you, whoever has a problem with you, that is their problem. It is not your problem. And that's uh, something I was going to write on. It kept coming up. I think uh, earlier on this morning too, I was thinking about writing on it for Substack. What other people think about you is none of your business. And in the false matrix, everything was about what everyone else thought about about you, right? What everything was always geared towards external appearances. The entirety of social media is based upon what other beings think about you, and you're supposed to cater to that and get their likes, right? And, but the more you do that, the more you cater towards other people to get their likes instead of just showing up and being who you are and drawing in those people that actually are vibing with you on a very organic and natural method. The more you are actually um, binding yourself to self sabotage self-rejection, self-betrayal cycles. So um, in, an important message coming through for those of you who are creators, those of you who are putting your work out into the world, those of you who are here to, to do that for the collective um, in a more public way, um, or, or not, you know, just putting your stuff out in the world, it doesn't matter, we're all here to put our stuff out in the world, we are. We're all here to share uh, our own unique giftings and the way we're able to connect with things and, and the way we're able to then express them, we're all, we're all artists in our own rights no matter what our medium is right so um this is a very real message for for some of you need to um not be paying attention to what other people are doing how other people have quote unquote had success because for one thing you don't even know if they've had success like numbers money all of that. it's never a, a true indication of success it's a true indication of of, of, of uh, like having things, but it's not an indication always of alignment. So not looking at, at people um, like other formulas and being very focused right now on just uh, what pleases you. And sometimes those things that please you are going to be difficult because it doesn't align with the, the, the common story of how you, you do well in this world. But what you need to understand and overstand is that 
the old world and its old stories are dying away. And as you choose to invest yourself in a new way of doing things, that's what you are applying your emotional energy, energy to and that's what you're bringing forth. So even like for me, I'll, I'll put myself out there, the way I navigate myself on social media platforms, I don't do it in the way that people tell you to do in order to, to advance. And I've had you know some success on YouTube, I'm very grateful for it, but I could have a lot more if I were constantly, constantly going against my own natural rhythms and just creating anyway, you know, but my guides were very real with me. They said, nope, sit down. It's time for you to sit down. It's time for you to pull back. They tell me when it is and my own self will fight because it's just like, well, how am I going to build what I'm building here if I keep on doing that? Well, we're not living in that world anymore where we're constantly working against our own natural rhythms in order to feed an algorithm because what are you feeding the algorithm when you're fighting against yourself you're feeding the algorithm the life force that you need at that moment to replenish you need to step away and use that life force for yourself to be in balance and in harmony with self so we are learning a new way to honor our own inner harmony and when we do that it's going to always look different than what the next person is doing because like i said at the beginning what um the other person needs to maintain their own sense of harmony in general or through whatever experience or season they're going through is always going to look different than what you need okay but you have to trust yourself that what that your your unique brand your unique message your unique talent gift a frequency is enough to push past the boundaries and the restrictions of the old world that had you thinking and believing that you had to do it a certain way in order to excel, that's dying. And you let it die loudly and faster as you stand, you know, like Peter Pan pose, and you choose to do things in accordance with what supports you on all planes, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. So it's time to loose yourself, take those shackles um, that are, are still taming you and keeping you in any way um, out of the fullness of being comfortable also in, um, in living on your own terms. So look at this, the anointed, I love it. Answer the call, leadership, empowerment, soul gifts. Here's the truth, I don't believe in... Um, in this whole thing in the spiritual community about leadership because most of the time the people that are harping on about leadership are the ones who um, have a need to boss around and control other people. I do believe though that there are people who energetically are here to lead the way, right? And um, they're not here to tell people what to do, they're here to live by example and to guide people as people come to them, right? Um, I um, what was I going to say about that? Sorry, I just lost my thought a second. We are all here to be leaders, okay? And that's another thing. Um, because as we lead ourselves, we bring our own um, personal electromagnetic field back into proper alignment and harmony. And that's what brings forth the collective energy also. Okay, so leadership is less about bossing people around and telling people what to do and it's more about having a very high sense of personal integrity and personal loyalty and devotion because you recognize, realize, you understand and overstand that as you have that for yourself, you are setting the tone for everyone else also. So there are some beings who, and there's the only way to, to lead is to rise up and to do the things that no one else is doing. That's another thing also. So, you know, in the spiritual community, we call that energy also that of the way shower. It's not something that's easy. It's, it's what you start to swim against the grain of the tides and everyone's going the opposite direction and making fun of you until they realize that they've gone to the dead end and, and then everyone wants to follow you now to the exit where you were going originally when they were making fun of you. That's kind of the energy. So, um, the only way we all reclaim that mantle of leadership within our own realities, not bossing other people around, but you know, having it over self, is by really connecting to what it is, again, that 
roots us in our energy, nourishes us, um, and, and provides the harmony we need to, to promote the cycles and the seasons within our own realities that keep us um, at all times it, with a sense of inner peace. You know, and again, it's going to look different for everyone. So the only real reason, the only real way to rise into leadership in the new earth is by rising it and reclaiming it in and for self, right? And this is why so many people who have been called ahead are going to be the ones you always see going alone. You won't see them with a crowd. You won't see them, a lot of them won't even be in a relationship. You get what I'm saying? Because um, that's not their purpose. They're, they're here to, to open the door so that other beings can enjoy that later down the line. So anyway, that's what I have for you. I hope that this, uh, the reading, the downloads, the divine stream of consciousness was um, helpful, insightful. I hope it's activated you. I hope it's rooted you deeper into your truth and into your power and into your strength. Um, I hope that it's confirmed and affirmed anything that was coming through for you also. And yeah, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your week for all information on how to work with me. You can check out my website. All that information will be in the description box and comment section below. If you would like to donate to the channel, you can do so through my Ko-Fi or my PayPal. That will be in the description box below. If you would like to join me for our Road Back to Wholeness small group session on Saturday, April the 27th, the link um, for booking will be below. And if you would like to join for the Tarot Astrology Group Q&A on Sunday, March the 28th, where the focus will be Mars and the Mars placements, you can also book through the link I will be leaving below. If you would like to join me over on Substack for my daily alchemy and where I post my energy updates, um, where I, I freely write about um, certain issues, energies, personal and otherwise, um, including, you know, uh, my nonfiction, poetry, etc. Um, you can do so. I, I will put the link below there also. Um, uh, my annual and monthly patrons on my Substack also have a monthly Q&A with me. It's part of their membership. And so that is occurring this coming weekend. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of you there. And what else? Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm going to uh, get going. I'll see you guys again soon. I wish you all the best. Um, I, I send you love, joy, peace, stability, and every beautiful thing under the sun that is your birthright when you are anchoring in your truth and in your power. Take care.